Well, today's the day. Today's the day that we finally get rid of this mobile home. She's been out here for 20 years and she has lived her useful life and it's time for her to move on and go somewhere else. I'm excited that she's leaving because that means that we can finally fence in this property. Haven't been able to fence in because if I were to put any fencing up, then when the movers came in, they would have had to remove it to get the mobile home out of here. Anyway, let me show you what's gotta be done. Movers should be here and shortly and start jacking this thing up and getting it off the shoring and getting the axles and the wheels underneath it and getting the tongue on it. Disconnecting water, sewer, heating and air. A lot of stuff's gotta happen prior to it leaving, but it's all gonna happen. So this tongue on the front of this thing is underneath the trailer right here it's gonna hook on just like a regular trailer on the back of a truck but this big tongue underneath here I don't know how many hundreds of pounds it weighs but it weighs a lot I mean that thing's got to be 14 inches thick and it's gonna bolt onto those bolts right there and to a plate right there using that ear right there and then one down there on the end of that thing I don't know what boy's gonna crawl underneath there and pull that sucker out he's gonna be a stud once that tongue's on there and he's hooked to the truck this thing's gonna be 101 feet long 16 feet wide I think this is the biggest mobile home you can get back of the mobile home is where the axles are gonna go they're gonna bring in five axles get them up underneath this thing and get them bolted on all the bracketry is still underneath the I-beams. You see that bracket hanging down and on that shoring and then that one's got red rope tied to it and then in front of that and then all the way up there to that shoring up there in front of that electrical. So five axles are gonna go right here in this area. You see, the home is up on all this blocking. What they're gonna have to do is they're gonna have to bring in a hydraulic jack, jack this thing up and get all of this shoring out from underneath it. Disconnect that plumbing pipe, which is the sewer going into the septic tank. We have to disconnect this water. right here which is nothing more than cutting that off and capping it you can see more of the septic right there the electrics already been removed and cut off and then the heating and air or that condensation unit rather the liquid and suction lines have to be cut and the uh Freon's got to be drained out of this system. A lot of work. I wouldn't want to be in this business, I don't think. You got to be down on your belly all the time up underneath this thing. Glad somebody else is doing it. There's another look at that tongue. Those two plates right there. Where they're going to bolt up. I don't know how they're gonna get that sucker lifted up there and hold it up there for somebody to get those bolts in there. But you can see this blocks over here, those blocks have fallen down, they're crooked. I mean, that one stack is crooked and that other stack has already fallen down. When you're inside the trailer, 
the doors they all sling and uh, sling closed and it won't stay open and so it needs to be leveled if you look at the trailer the whole length of it from the end you can see it's real wavy from not being level and some feral cats have moved in and a lady cat has had her kittens up in here i don't know if they're still in there i hope not here they are, Georgia's best mobile home setup. They showed up. They're unloading all the axles and the tires. Getting ready to uh, crawl up underneath there and hook all that stuff up. Right, got the tongue on hooked up to the trailer all the shorings out and the axles are on getting ready to uh, roll this thing out of here five axles up underneath there got all the bricks up there plumbing pipes and getting ready to roll out. And the rain comes as soon as they start to leave. Now the thing is, he's got to turn right onto the road. And there's not a whole lot of room to the right with that telephone pole right there. So he's gonna swing left out into the field and kind of hit it at an angle. But there's a big old ditch in front of the house. I mean, in front of the, uh, right next to the road, which is in front of the house. And he's got to navigate that ditch, but with these five axles right here, it's gonna, it'll bridge that gap pretty easily, he said. So, we'll see what happens. These boys have gotten stuck. We had rain last night, and they stopped and got stuck. There's no way he's gonna be able to traverse this little hill. It's only about 10 feet, but there's no way he's gonna be able to traverse it and not get stuck. He didn't want to stay on the driveway because he needed to cut it wide. But it's just slick out there. All right, so they got it unstuck. They repositioned the truck, got the truck onto the gravel driveway. They were never going to be able to get that thing out. So now they're going to pull out and attempt to turn right. But he doesn't have a lot of maneuver room, so he's just going to seesaw it back and forth until he can get it turned.
he's gonna get that thing off the road over there and get stuck. This is just as wet over here. He's still got one set of dualies on the gravel, I mean on the asphalt, so. Now all the wheels are in the dirt. And his front wheels are sliding. So the boy that's driving this truck is about 18 years old. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's got to take his clues from his granddad. They're going to figure it out eventually, I guess. Look at that truck sliding. That is some wet, wet, wet stuff. They're gonna have traffic hemmed up. Got one set spinning, one set grabbing. Why these trucks aren't four wheel drive, I don't know. All right, so they're sending in the cavalry now. Hook a chain up to it, try to get it out. And you can see how tight that turn is. Why he wanted to turn left, I mean, why he wanted to turn right when he could have turned left is beyond me. It only been about another mile. He's gonna have to seesaw this thing back and forth many, many, many times to make that turn. You got a county street sign over there and you got a six by six post stuck in the ground. Here we go. I can't believe it. I surely would not have thought that was going to go that easy. Luckily, that's not on my side. He made the turn pretty good. You can see the tire tracks. Not bad. Plenty of room. Time for this thing to head on down the road. Well, I'm glad that thing's gone. Got a little bit of cleanup left. A little bit of grading, a little bit of grass seed. You'll never know it was here. But look at that view now. It's gonna be beautiful. No obstruction, no nothing. We'll replace it with a horse barn soon enough. And that'll be another video. But thanks for coming. See ya, bye-bye.